Hey everybody, how hey you everybody. doing? <laughs> we're gonna talk about violent video games today, but first, come on up here, Tanks, and we're gonna show you the power of video here. Ooh, we got a gun show going on. <laughs> so we're gonna do stand right there, right there. I look a lot closer. I look a lot bigger, right, when I'm right here than that guy. See, my flex there. I, I don't want to rip my shirt. I got long sleeves. So I'm gonna rip it. I don't want to flex right now. So Janelle finally showed up for work. Thank you. What? <laughs> <laughs> but, welcome, okay, welcome. so. We've been talking about a lot of different things, and Pastor Tanks is joining us today for a really good one, where in the wake of last week's mass shootings, there's been a lot of discussion about what's causing this, mm -hmm. this trend in America. And no one is claiming that this is the cause, okay? Most people would say there's many contributing factors to this. Mm -hmm. Right. And one of the ones that's been mentioned by the president, by many people, is violent video games. And Jim Daly wrote a really interesting commentary from Focus on the Family, where his title is, of course, violent video games desensitize kids. He writes, as officials attempt to continue piecing together the motives behind last week's horrific cold-blooded murder sprees, uh, attention has turned once again to the role of violent video games play in these types of attacks. The president mentioned that it's one of the factors, and he goes on to quote the president about his uh, ideas on that. Critics immediately ch challenged the assertion suggesting that science on the subject was far from settled because science is far from settled yeah. on, yeah. what, on what the impact of violent video games is. But he goes on to say it's just common sense that regularly immersing yourself in bloody violent video games ultimately, eventually, and inevitably desensitizes a person to actual acts of savagery. So, is he right that, of course, violent video games desensitize kids and therefore contribute to mass shootings first i want to give some uh, like just what's up and big up to mike he says es martes i bet you don't know See? what he said See? Yeah. Miguel. yeah it's martes miguel you know mr uh, muscles you didn't know that what? and myrna too <laughs> no, exactly. deborah's idea, excited because she says i'm available today Yay. hi Hello. susan and samuel and all of y'all for uh, tuning in, make sure you share us. And so what do you think, Tanks, about this? No, I mean, so I, I if I just go by what the, the word is saying, then yeah, I do I do believe that violent video games desensitizes. I don't blame violent video games for, for crime, right. um, like directly. But I do think it desensitizes us in the sense that it just... It, it makes it less offensive, less shocking when right. we see it. So if we're saying, does it desensitize us like that? Then yeah, I do. I don't. I don't think it's no different. Like I was telling Janelle, it's no different than the news. Um, it's no, you know, all of that. We keep watching after a while. When you see it, you're not even bothered by it no more. You're just like, yeah, somebody else got murdered. And so in that sense, I do think it desensitizes us. And I think that once desensitization, desensitizing, desensitization, whatever the word is, happens. <laughs> um, <laughs> It does make me, it does, in some sense, allow um, or open up the door for me to be violent um, because I'm just, you know, a little bit. That's my opinion. Okay. And so, therefore, if we remove all violent video games, mass shootings will stop. Absolutely not. No. Not <laughs> Absolutely not. And so, because I, I even have an issue, and, and th this is, people are going to think I'm crazy for this, mm -hmm. but I don't completely buy into the desensitization concept with violent video games. Gotcha. Because there's a parallel for me. When I was a kid, I mean, we did not have the realistic shooter games and such, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I don't even know, when you were a kid, you're about, what, five years younger than me, something like that? Six years? I'm 34. So how are you, 50? Basically 35. Okay. <laughs> No. <laughs> so, like when I was a kid, you know, you played games and you'd kill people, but they didn't look like people mm -hmm. and all that. But I loved playing all the Legends of Zelda games. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's all about magic. Mm -hmm. All about magic. You get potions for this, you get. Like, it's all about magic. Mm -hmm. I today am just as rejecting of magic as I did before I played Zelda. Because I was able to, in my mind, even as a child, say, this is not real, mm -hmm. and my life is real. Mm -hmm. This is fun, it's play. Mm -hmm. I'm playing a video game that has magic, but I'm not going to think it's real just because I'm playing a game. Gotcha. How old were you? Uh, I played Zelda. You don't want to... You try to embarrass me? No, no, I'm just trying to figure out, like, so you never, you never, like, whipped a wand, you never... 
Well, I mean, did I ever use my imagination as a kid? Sure, but um, no, I didn't do it much with that. Gotcha. Because my son watches Power Rangers, and he's three, and he walks around all day long trying to hit people with imaginary swords. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, does, but does he think that for that Power Rangers are real? I don't know. He's three. He might. <laughs> I don't know. Three year old life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when, when you get to a kid who can start playing a game right. with, with all the complexity involved in playing a game like Fortnite. Do they really think it's real? No, not not at all. And so if they don't think it's real, how much can it really desensitize us? Because we know it's fantasy. Just like I don't anymore after reading the Chronicles of Narnia think that talking lions mm -hmm. and like wizards are real mm -hmm. and witches so than, my, than I did afterwards. My only struggle with that, and I agree, Brian, my only struggle with that is when we compare it to like Zelda and Chronicles of Narnia. But these video games have real life looking AI human beings that are being shot in the head. So yeah, I know if I if I throw a potion bag and it mm -hmm. makes it green and you faint out that that's <laughs> that's not real unless you're in like New Orleans or something. But but but, but when I, if I'm playing Call of Duty, I know very well I am and I'm playing on the internet with my friends. Mm -hmm. You are the controller behind that person, and I am trying to kill you. I know that I am shooting a, a like human being in the head. I'm not shooting a, a lion. And so I think in those senses, there's a big difference from, like, Zelda and is, Super Mario is, Brothers. I, I can give you that. But I don't, I still, I don't understand my position. I don't blame video games for killings. I blame right. evil for killings. But I do think that everything that the world does and gives us imagery-wise is to desensitize us from fast foods, from whatever they whatever they want us to kind of trend towards. They continue to place it in front of us because they know that that can begin to shape or desensitize. I'm going to be quiet because I can take over the whole show. No, that's good. <laughs> Jeffrey says, I'm 64. Are they animated or do they look realistic? Kind of saying what you're saying. But Angela, no one thinks it's real. I don't care how realistic it looks. No one thinks it's real. Angela also says, the games have changed over time. Myrna says, that's the difference. These games are very realistic. I'm not 100%. But don't they use these types of simulations in the armed services? Yep. They're used in police trainings. Good morning, Daniel. Yeah. Hi. I don't, I, I don't know how that... Happy left-hander. But oh. the thing is, even yes, though... Yeah. And Deborah says, uh, the Western years ago used killing but they taught murder was wrong and only in self-defense was shooting valid. Looking mm -hmm. for people just to shoot affects everyone to some extent. I, I don't know, though. Like, year, years ago when Ron was a kid, everybody played Cowboys and Indians. Right? Yep. And, and they didn't call it Cowboys and Native Americans then. They call it Cowboys and Indians. Yeah, we did. Have you ever gone out and shot Native Americans? Not yet. <laughs> I don't have any plans. Like this, and, and think of, like, if you go in the Rock Hall, we all kind of blush and laugh when you see preachers yelling about Elvis's hips are going to make people go out and have sex. Nobody would film Elvis mm -hmm. from the waist down at first. Because Elvis, oh, it's hips, it's over. We're all going to run around and have sex. What? Well, that yeah. just doesn't make sense. That's crazy town. <laughs> like, maybe it desensitizes us to hips or something, but to me it's this huge intellectual leap to go from I watch a violent video game to I now like violence so much I'd either do it or I would cheer for it. Okay, let me ask you a question. So let's just let's go Bible then. Uh-oh, he's using the Bible. So, so... Again, remember, I think it's just pure evil, but everybody has the potential for evil, right? And yeah. everybody has the potential for hate. Everybody has the potential for anger, right? Just be angry and sin not. But sure. in that moment of anger, you can strike the rock twice like Moses, right? And forfeit right. your whole journey into the promised land. James tells us that, that, that the enemy is, is that nobody's t tempted by God, but we're tempted by our own desires, right? Mm -hmm. That the enemy entices us, right? And so my thing is, if the enemy uses imagery if he uses voices people and he uses all of these things to try to draw out of us evil things mm. and we know that this world and this age that we're in currently jesus is on the throne right but that it is temporarily given over a little bit right into the the dominions of the of the enemy and we notice what is the things that are always being portrayed in front of our hearing what are the things that are always being portrayed in front of our seeing most of those things have nothing to do with trying to promote godliness at all, right. but all to pull us away from godliness and godly character. So if I'm 
tracking along that line. You may say it's a jump, but if I'm tracking along that line, then I have to at least say, well, no, what we see and what we hear does affect us in some mm -hmm. Everybody's differently. Everybody's different because Brian doesn't want to go kill anybody. But what if I get so mad and I'm so angry? And and all my life, the only outlook of anger I had was in punching a boxing bag without discipline or going, I'm going to just go lock myself in a room and shoot people all the time. You know, I think that it will begin to affect you when you get in the real world. Because Now, if you have great parents mm -hmm. that are teaching you different avenues and you're playing video games, I think you're less prone to take out that anger or that violence in that way. But if all you've ever seen, if all you ever know is when I'm angry, I hit. When I'm angry, I shoot. If that's the only mentorship that you have, then I think that you're more prone to go out there and shoot people when you get upset. Now, okay. Tamar's response to that is pretty interesting. Can you find that one again for us? Tamar uh, said basically... Interesting conversation. It's a longer quote, Janelle. What? Up here? Oh, yeah. Right here. She said, interesting conversation. If, if you read the book of Joshua and Judges, the nation of Israel was at war continuously with graphic outcomes. Mm -hmm. Does that mean that people went on murderous rampages? Not so much. As in, the Bible itself has, like, graphic detail of sinful, wrong, bad behavior. Does reading those stories, like reading David peeping on Bathsheba and then having her husband killed, well, Does that make us do that? There's a whole culture of people who use the Bible to murder, rape, and enslave people. I totally agree. <laughs> no, they actually read it and did do it. I, I totally <laughs> agree with that. But but I think reading reading the violence before it could be portrayed mm -hmm. can't necessarily be the total outcome here. I mean, Absolutely. And and there, there there could be a connection for some. Mm -hmm. But I think the problem becomes when we try to scapegoat vi violent video games in explaining away a societal problem. It may contribute to the desensitization for some people who are predisposed to violence. Can we say that? But how do I we know? I think that's what it is. Yeah. But because how do we know listen to what she didn't even said it yet. T t tell us about one of your kids who plays. So uh, one of my children who's older, he's 15, and he plays a Fortnite. And he's super tall, 6'3", big mm -hmm. kid. And he actually, uh, every once in a while, will lose his patience. But he never steps on that line. And recently, there was something that happened, whether online or something. And he was like, what is up with these people? And just out, like, amazed at, like, the violence. And he was like, mommy, I can't even, like, kill my fish. And I'm thinking, this is the same kid that plays Fortnite. Now it's turned into Minecraft. But to, I think it takes something to take you over the line physically. And I think it contributes yeah. if you already have violent tendencies, if you see it in your home, if it's affirmed in your environment. But I think to see like a, a regular kid in a home to, and just say, well, no, video games make you do that, that's like oversimplifying what it takes. Well, but, but even but even punching someone like I've never punched or been in a, in well, a fight I mean, with someone. You're not that strong. It so takes something you? to. You don't think it takes something. It takes to anger, and in a fit of anger, like, anger. When you're angry, you are like predisposed. I don't know how I feel about that language because when you're angry, you're predisposed to do anything. Right. Because your anger, anger That's is true. operating in the realm that is not of God, and now you're in the enemy's realm. And once you lock into that anger, he'll influence. He'll try to influence you. To do anything, you find yourself all the time like I don't even know why I did that. That's not like you see it all the time. People yeah. that have never been violent their whole life, and they go killing people, and it's like they've never had, they've That's never true. been violent. What happened? Because in that moment of anger, they predisposed to do whatever the enemy tells them to do. Well, but looked at from a different perspective, predisposition could be an issue. Like those who are yeah. more, more, more susceptible to addiction. True. Yeah. They choose not to partake in alcohol, which the Bible clearly says alcohol is not sinful. Right, right. Drunkenness is. Right. So they abstain from it because they're predisposed to it. Somebody else could have a glass of wine like Jesus did almost every night and be fine. You know the sad part about that though is I don't understand. I'm predisposed to it until I do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fair, no, then, now I'm out here beating people up all the time, and I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. I'm predisposed to violence. Yeah. If you scroll up, we had a really great comment right below what uh, she said from uh, somebody who hasn't weighed in much here. Uh, Mark, uh, go down, Mark O'Neill, right there. I think I am the perfect demographic for this. All of my friends, including myself, grew up loving Call of Duty and all sorts of first person shooters. I never saw any increase of violence or aggressive tendencies in any of them. The real problem isn't the video games, but underlying issues that aren't always apparent. Yeah, like, yes, and, and th that, that's where I'm coming from here. It's that 
it can't just be the video game it's that because some people are able to play a violent video game and say to, say to themselves, this is not real, just like mm -hmm. Captain America and the Hulk are not real. Mm -hmm. And I can watch the Hulk and not go smash things. And I can watch Iron Man yeah. and not shoot lasers out of my hands or try to. Like I, that there is a way to say, this is fantasy, this is reality. I'm going to simply see this as fantasy and not let it impact reality. I don't want to like make I a think. big step. I want to like so just help me if I'm getting off topic. But like when we're talking about predisposition, in 20 years, Len has never even grabbed me in anger. It would take a whole different person for him to step over the line. So in terms of predisposition, you don't think like as parents or family, we kind of know if a person has the ability to go there. I'm thinking of kids that I have that I'm like, dude, if any, all, any of you six, <laughs> like, you got no business, whether it's watching, you know, like, Raina, she's real sassy, watching, um, what are some car cartoons that Arthur. are... Arthur. Arthur, yeah. yeah. She w would be the sassy. one. So I would be like, okay, you got no business watching this, where somebody else would watch it and not a big thing. So my point is, can't we be in intimate relationships with certain people and kind of know... Mm -mm. You know, we like things. we can't make blanket statements and say no. Video games. I don't care who you are. It's gonna. Ma it can make you shoot people. Seriously. I, I'm gonna be. I know. I, I do agree. With, no, no, no. Because remember, again, my position is not that video games are the cause of mass killings. Right. My, my position is only that they do sensi desensitize you yeah. to violence. And I just think if we if we really just assess the culture that we live in, um, that, was it just you that put that up? Somebody just put up. A picture of, of a, a first grade book that they're a second grade book they're reading is that said I need a new butt. Um, no, and this is a that book. wasn't me. Okay, it wasn't. <laughs> this is a book. Like, well, why would you? Why am I? Why do a second grader need to read books like that? Right. Yeah. We know yeah. that they use things to desensitize us as they prep us towards whatever the, they're trying to take us. And so by the time it hits, we're just like, oh, I've yeah. been, I'm, I'm unaffected. It doesn't, it doesn't bother. I mean, I know in my own life, if you just keep showing me stuff, after a while, I'm going to fight it. After a while, I'm like, it's just, I'm not, it just is what it is. This is life. Right. So I think we have to be honest on that. But here's a, my, yeah. I think, I may go, somebody may think I'm legalistic in this way. And listen, and I'm not saying this because I'm perfect. Like, I play Call of Duty. Now, granted, when I played Call of Duty, I also was out there in the streets trying to mimic the stuff I was doing at the same time. I, I stopped playing all of those games when I became a Christian. Here's why. And for a long time, I stopped even supporting my brother, which was, and I still wrestle through that sometimes, but I just support my brother, who's a, who's a, who's a, who's a professional, professional MMA fighter. Because that's not me, by the way. He means his biological brother, I believe. <laughs> uh, no, my best friend, my best friend. Your best friend, okay, yeah, sorry. Just I like my brother. I'm not the, the Just like yeah, my brother. And I struggled with that for a long time. <laughs> Because I still cannot reconcile in my head as Christians, whether we think, and I'm just being honest, whether we think it's, it's we're, whether we think it's the cause or whatever, as Christians, I cannot rec I cannot justify in my mind why we would want our children to play violent games. Um, because I, there's no scripture that you. I mean, now if we want to go to Old Testament, we can we can do we can do some real good Old Testament understanding and break it down. But we do not. There is no. Christian worldview that God is just that God is just like yeah go play a video game and murder people. Okay, so, <laughs> so where does okay if we're gonna start saying that now? Exactly where I'm going. If we're gonna start saying that now, let's include boxing. I, no, that's what I just said. That's why I mentioned. So it. now you're gonna tell all Christians, y'all better not watch boxing. What okay. else? Where, where do we draw the line? Yeah. What about football? Mm -hmm. Football is very violent. Okay. Yeah, remember the conversation. It's going to desensitize you to hurting people, so don't watch football. Remember the conversation I had when I was just typing in, and I forgot what we was talking about. One of those days you supported her. I forgot something. Yeah, I supported her. <laughs> but again, I don't. Again, I don't. That we the culture created violence as sport, not God. So just because just because this is the culture that we're living in doesn't mean we have to engage in it. And again, I'm saying that, not saying I don't watch boxing, not saying, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, but I, I do always wrestle when when my brother, I'm being transparent and honest, when my, somebody got something at me, when my brother, when my brother is out there, and he, he's a good fighter, when he's out there choking this dude out and kicking this dude in his head and his blood all over the place, and I'm in the background like, yeah, and I'm sitting there like, I don't know if I should be cheering for this because this is, vi because desensitizing, Understand what I'm saying? You kick somebody in the head, you can kill them. Right. right. You but punch somebody in the... We got to start defining the line, though. Because right? because both people technically consented. 
But so consent so, so, so means so violent is violence. Yes. Both people consent. So two Christians come together and say, "Yeah, let's shoot each other in the head." Well, we both consented, Lord. So is it murder? Stop making good points. Let's read some comments. Jimmy. Me, uh, Jimmy says. Um, in our day, we played Space Invaders and other games where we destroyed <laughs> yeah. aliens and other enemy types, and it had no effect on our social They deserve skills. it, though. They're aliens. I, yeah. I think kids today need to be educated on what they watch on TV and the games they play. Tamar, no one will be able to blame video games, their parent society, when they stand before the throne. Amen. Amen to uh, that. Tamar yeah. is throwing down some truth today. Yeah. Susan, Brian is speaking like the impact is something that comes through reason. It is not. Humanity is predisposed to sin. Who do you see? Joe Tyree. I like your comment. Oh, yeah. Um, Daniel agrees with Ron. I don't know, but when I watched Cowboys and Indians, I never scalped or arrowed anyone just saying. That's, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, every era has this idea, and where is there room for fantasy and imagination without it predisposing us or saying it's going to... Cause XYZ. Brian, why? What if someone's acting acting? violent? Okay. <laughs> what, what if kids are playing acting out David and Goliath? Paul wants to hear from Ron. What, Sorry, what, what, well, David was told by God that, that this was an uncircumcised Philistine. <laughs> the dude swung a rock, hit him in the head, dropped him down, cut off his head, and held up his severed head God for the world said, to see. Listen, ancient Near East stuff. We listen. We can't go into this old. So we could go there, but not. We ain't got time on this. So if my kids <laughs> pretend to be David and actually. Goliath, and they take a mannequin's head and they cut it off, they hold it up. Oh, don't worry, mom. I'm just killing Goliath. This is not Fortnite. Are we okay with that? We gotta educate them on what was actually going. That's on what people there. say when they're wrong. Go ahead. <laughs> Oh, okay. right. Education is key. <laughs> I got two points. Um, <laughs> when you when you play a yeah, first exactly. person shooter, there's one thing that always happens to you. You also get shot and die. That's right. So that's part of the sensit desensitization too. Yeah. You're always going to die, and that does kind of come to bear. The mass shooters are pretty pretty typically intending to die in their in their big event. Um, but that's, you know, just an interesting side point. And then, um, oh, I lost it. That's all right. I got a point for you for, for my wife then. She just texted yeah. me. She's right. watching this. Hey, Sarah. <laughs> and she said, and this, she's an argument against me, honey. What is this? Yeah. Ooh. But she says, but the cowboys and Indians probably contributed to our racist society. Amen. So did the Cowboys oh, and Indians shit. make us desensitized to racial discrimination? Amen. Stop being right, honey. Oh. Amen. Let's just be honest, Sarah. Come on, Sarah. Clap it up for Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a U.S. Army vet that oh. sent an email saying, I just wanted to comment on the topic about video games. In my personal opinion, violent games are not the cause of violent behavior in the youth. The lack of value on theirs and the lives of others is the underlying cause. Sure. Do violent video games desensitize the youth to violent behavior? Absolutely. I'm a U.S. vet. I've uh, been a Christian all my life except Jesus at 16. Why do soldiers go to the firing range to be efficient with their weapon and des desensitize them to pull in the trigger at human-shaped targets? I don't know if I like this comment. We're not, or <laughs> we're not, uh... Killing because most uh, military vets value life like yeah, no other. Like we have uh, morals and don't. values. It's very That's sad easy. when you think about it. They're not unguided um, then when conflict arises. Some most likely haven't been disciplined often enough to fear discipline. Others fear pain, so a gun is the answer. The truly strong are not violent. They're protectors. Yeah. Um, so what's your response to that? Because you that. kind of agree with me on this one. What I think is my job... Uh, like, for me, caring for a pet, even caring for plants, I'm big about that. Or the way they care, they can't even, like, in front of Len, raise, hardly raise their voice to their sister. Because he's always like, you teach her what to accept in terms of how a man talks to her. That mm -hmm. far outweighs what they do with little cartoons on Fortnite. Mm -hmm. Their heart, I'm shaping their heart. And I think my kids can distinguish between, I'm playing a video game. We were killing Mario all day long. There's movies. So y'all better shut down a whole lot of stuff on movies, mm -hmm. sports, and everything. And I think if we focus on the true thing, which is shaping their heart, they'll be able to distinguish 
um, you know, truth I from. Love y'all. I don't know. See, somebody would oh, be no. somebody would be shocked to find out that Janelle Nettles homeschooling. Hey. Len's not six kids oh, like, teaching traditional Christian values to yeah. the kids that you have no problem with Fortnite. Um, it's Fortnite, by the way. Fortnite. <laughs> this shows how relevant this man is. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm not telling you. Know you like, you got to have kids in the right age de de demographic yeah. for this, and, and it's typically boys are. We don't even have game. video games in my house, so. Yeah. We have even. Uh, what I did was it's a first person I, shooter game. I played oh. with them one time, and they were laughing the whole time because it was a mess. And I saw there wasn't. And correct me if I'm wrong, because I only played one time. There wasn't blood. I didn't see blood. Right. It was very it. like robot looking. It wasn't like okay. what's the other one that was? Ah, oh, there's another one that's auto something. Grand Theft Auto. It wasn't like what I've heard that one's like. That's you a know, whole different story. There wasn't yeah. blood. Violent. So um, yeah, I felt yeah. fine, and I and because I homeschool and I have access to them, and I I'm very tuned in. I would recognize like, wait a minute. You're, th this is impacting you. Mm -hmm. Just like I've done it with cartoons and the way it impacts the way they sass back. And I've told them, Peep Pippa, the pig, that was one. Uh. That was like, girl, please, you are not a pig. You are not Pippa. Turn that off. Because I've noticed <laughs> it impacted the way they responded to me. Oh, wow. Michelle says, I grew up in, a, in, oh, yeah, Atari era. And, of course, mm -hmm. technology is so advanced that the best we can do is try to explain the difference between reality and fake. But because we hate and... Anger is so unfortunately a big problem in this country. Trying to teach our children peace and love is so challenging now um, because it's all they see. Well, yeah, Mackenzie hasn't commented. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, but before we get to Mackenzie's comment, one of my frustrations as a high school teacher, too, was how we always undervalue the intelligence I love of kids. This. Mm. We, we, we just assume kids are just big idiots. Yes. Now, thank they have you. a lot to learn. But they know it, just because it looks real doesn't mean kids think it's real. They're not that stupid. I think their engagement, if we were busy teaching them how to engage people, the friends around them, and teaching them to be compassionate, I think that's the bigger battle. Right, Way because bigger if, battle. If, if you look at a 10-year-old boy playing Fortnite and you go, hey, is this real? He'd go, what are you saying? This yeah. is a video game. So, right. so can I make a comment too? No. <laughs> so, I'm just go ahead. So real quick, one, one, and I had a question. One, since you brought up David and Goliath. But listen, one, I really, I actually appreciated the, the Army vet because I think he actually yeah. hit on both points. And somebody else yeah, said it. To he where he, he, the, the, he's saying, he, he agreed. No, they do desensitize. Yeah. Now, desensitization yeah. does not, we're not saying it's the reason why. Right? But he but he also uh, <clears throat> hit on the, the understanding intrinsic human value. Right? Yeah. Teaching people that, that the difference between human life and value and what you were saying in a video game you know like i i'm a i'm a i'm a i'm a, I'm a master fly killer right when i see mm -hmm. flies in the house i God made those flies i kill them he gave me dominion i kill them <laughs> <laughs> i kill them and then and then i tell them when i kill them now go back and you tell your friends don't come in my house no more they did i don't know how they're gonna do that Right? Because I don't care about a fly. Aren't this you desensitizing your children's You to don't care tomorrow? about a fly? No, and not when it's in my house. Me of that, not she would be house. like, oh my goodness. Not when it's in my house buzzing around my food. <laughs> That's why I gotta go. Desensitizing Thank your kids you. to violence. My kids Thank don't. You. So listen, I'm so so what I'm saying is because it's a fly, right? A fly doesn't have intrinsic human value, right? Intrinsic human value is only applied to human beings, right? When when you read Genesis, right? When you read Genesis, God said what? He didn't say I will I will require your life. If you kill an animal, he said, I will acquire the light blood of another if they take the blood of okay, a Okay, wait, hold up. So we want to make sure we're not, like, raising serial killers. No, 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 no. <laughs> Animals matter. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. they matter. They, they matter, but they, they got to but, be but compassionate there, with But there is a complete difference between intrinsic uh, and human insane. value yeah, right. and, 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 and animals. It just really is. Like, it is. Now, that doesn't mean, go, no, we don't go harming animals. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm not yeah. saying that either. And, to, <laughs> and that's part of teaching them. Please hear me. I'm not saying you go out there and start harming animals. You don't mean nothing. But I'm saying yes. intrinsic human value is a principle of Christianity. But here's the thing. So I agree with what he was saying. It is an education piece. But here's my question: When we, when we and I, and this is a hard topic, and it does it does put up a, put us up against the society that we live in. But but when you say like, okay, these these wicked nations made idols, right? Now the Bible makes it clear that these idols were nothing. You crafted it, and then you then you called it something. You made it, put a mouth on it. You gave it eyes, and then you yeah. worshipped it. This is absolutely 
nothing. God did not tell the Israelites, when you go into the, these nations, just realize that their gods don't mean anything. He said, tear them down. Completely remove these things from this land. Why? He said, so that you do not fall into the habit of following and worshiping their gods. There is some, We have to acknowledge that when we allow things to coexist side by side with us, that's why you do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. That's why I said a little leaven, leaven is the whole lump. These things can affect. Now, and the, and the thing that I think we do is we look at our own life and we say, well, I'm not affected by that. It didn't do anything to me. But Romans 15 in the Bible says that we are to consider others, right? Romans chapter 14 says if you can eat meat and that person can't, it didn't say that you say, well, I can eat milk, meat, just your fault. Paul said, I'll just never eat meat again. Because my job as a Christian is not to think about what affects me, but will it affect Janelle? And if it could possibly affect Janelle, then I have to care more than, well, it doesn't bother me, so load it up, right? right. I have to say, well, you know what? Janelle is bothered than that, and so I have to care about the people as a whole. So that's just where I stand. I and think yet. the scriptures support that. <laughs> and yet. No, Brian, it's not a yet. Also, I won. <laughs> also, Paul went among idols in Athens and didn't tear them down. He, he preached the gospel and didn't wreck their idols. And yet, he also talked he to the He intellectually in tore them down. But he talked to the Christians in <laughs> Corinth who were worried about eating meat sacrificed to idols and said, yeah. it's fine if you want to eat it. It's no big deal. How different is a meat, a piece of meat in an animal destroyed to a false god uh -huh. eating that steak uh -huh. from playing a violent video game? Yeah. And then right after that, he said, but I'll never eat meat again. <laughs> so he said... He, but he, he, said, but he, he said, said you could do yeah, it. But, 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 but what did he say right after that? He said, knowledge builds up. Mm -hmm. I mean, he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, yeah, he said, knowledge builds up. Um, in other words, listen, because I know it's nothing... I can walk, I say, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing. Yeah. But but love cares. That knowledge keeps us puffed up into not caring. And so right after that, Paul then goes and says, but I'll never eat meat again. Why? Because I'm operating in love, not in what I know. So then what we I don't should like be about that is the, is the line then. I mean, boxing is disturbing. To you? So now, oh my gosh, it's disturbing. <laughs> I'm, yeah. No, 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 I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm, I'm just asking. It's disturbing. Yeah. And so for me to hear people say no... I would rather sit and watch a whole game of Fortnite than than boxing. Because that's a real I human being. I don't understand how there's a crowd of people cheering. Like, what the heck? That's then, normal in our society. But based on what he's saying with that example, the idea would be a Christian in their own home who is not affected by it could watch it, but they shouldn't be out promoting it. And cheering oh, okay. For it in public. Oh, that, yeah. That's I'll what you're that. saying. I thought he meant shut because, it down. Because it Paul, is saying, Paul is saying, look, if, if eating the meat doesn't bother you, go ahead and eat the meat. Okay. But, you're, but he's saying if it causes someone else to stumble, you shouldn't do it. That's it. Okay, no. Again, yes, I agree. Again, this, is a, this is a very thin line. I mean, it's we're not going to... I mean, this is just good conversation. I, I, mean, we're not gonna, I think we can solve it. Because, because, I think because, got the because Galatians 5 says, do not use your... But only do not use your freedom... Mm -hmm. As a license to sin. Right after that, we know what it's talking about. It's talking about love, because right after that, it starts talking about love, right? Um, and we know that the law of Christ, right? So, But, again, freedoms are in the gray. They're not in the clear. Yeah. Right? If They're not in the clear, right? Harming another human being is very clear, mutual agreement or not. <laughs> but there's no, there's no restriction against harming pretend human beings. That are not real. No, you, that is true. That is so. That is a freedom. You absolutely. And I so would agree there. What I, What I wonder if if, if the missing <laughs> yeah, piece. I have to agree on that one. What's the missing so, piece? So we can play Grand Theft Auto. We can't watch. Boxing. No, no, not no, no, Grand Theft. No. no, that one's a lot. Oh, that's so, too much. I would. It's not. still it is, not real. It is too much. It has blood and like other stuff. That's it's got a whole crazy. bunch of horrible violence. But yeah, it's not real. But I got some good comments, y'all. What I What What I'm trying to say is. Could a violent video game in, in a kid whose family does not have a moral center in Christ be desensitized to the point of violence? Probably. Yeah. But what Janelle's talking about is her and Len can be the primary conveyors of biblical truth to their kids, and that will supersede anything they get out of a video game. Hopefully. Therefore, their family could create a situation where it could be completely benign for their kids to play Fortnite, which right. is very similar to the approach that Sarah and I would have in this. You see what I'm saying? Like... There could be somebody who are, it would be really a dangerous activity. Sarah agree with me, by the way. No, Sarah likes it. <laughs> Mackenzie she says, me. I love your comment, Mackenzie. I think blaming desensitization on video games alone cheapens the situation. Perhaps 
They play a role, but society isn't teaching youth to be sensitive or compassionate to human beings. And that is a bigger problem than violent video games. You guys are going to love Marcus. He said, I loved watching Tom and Jerry and Roadrunner and Wild Coyote as a child, but no matter how mad I became at someone, I never on my wildest dreams thought about hitting someone in the head with a bat or an android. Thank you, Marcus, because that's yeah. the point I'm trying to make. he probably doesn't walk around with a bat all the time either. I don't no, think he's come bat on. Ask him as he ever got in a fight. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it was clearly fantasy. Well, just because it was a Roadrunner. I get it, <laughs> but it's clearly a video game. It's not real. <laughs> it's not real. Then play Grand Theft Auto. Deborah says children's brains develop differently and they can't differentiate at a very young age. Well, Gotta yeah, be mindful as a parent. I think that's what it is. I think that's and true. And there's some kids that are of age and got no business still playing. So I think as a parent, <laughs> we need to be, like she says, mindful. Know your mm -hmm. kid. Like, there's some kids that got no business playing <laughs> uh, uh, Fortnite. I love it sometimes. Rod <laughs> says, Janelle, boxing is a boring waste of time. <laughs> what joyful thrill is there in watching two people trying to beat each other up? It baffles me. I don't me. know. Hold up, though. Baffles me. Hold I don't understand. And my dad was all about boxing. Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali. Oh, my gosh. They I captured understand. the attention of the entire country because they didn't like boxing. Muhammad Ali made it more than about punching somebody. Yeah. yeah. And then what happened? He got hit and... Bit somebody, didn't he? Bite you know, somebody. You know, you know, you know, you know. Just recently, you know, just <laughs> recently, two two boxers actually died from getting hit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just recently. Wow. Now, they're not they're not the mainstream ones, right. so you don't see it plastered over the news. But two just died because it's but but nobody watches boxing and thinks. Thank you. Oh my God, he's going to die if he hits him because we're desensitized right. to Sheila. it. Yeah. You like it? Hold up. L listen to Sheila, Pastor Tank. Sheila, thank you for joining. You're awesome. Does tanks mean giving up something completely? Paul and meat was his example. Or just went around that particular person. Just need clarification Thank as you. you can't please everyone. Clarify. You can't please everyone. Uh, Paul said, I'll never eat meat again. He didn't say, I won't eat meat around this person. He said, I'll never eat meat again. So if we're using Paul, then I have to believe. He also no, what neutral. he commanded. I'm saying he made a decision. Yeah, yeah, no. What he said is is it's stupid. neutral. He said you can have it if you want. Yeah, no. He said no. I thought she asked him what I think about Paul. I, well, yeah, I think Paul. I don't think he ever ate meat again. For us, I think it is neutral. But again, even that I can't please everybody. I don't know. I just think differently. You see her point though, Pastor. I get her like, point. I get she, her. She's point. trying to say publicly doing it versus in private. Isn't there a difference? For for the individual, but we still gotta hone in on ourselves, and and we have to acknowledge that this stuff affects us. Like again, please hear my argument, because I don't, I actually don't think me and Brian or and Janelle are actually even coming from the same vantage point. No, again, I mean, we're right. You're I'm on. Right. I'm only. <laughs> we're not on the same vantage. <laughs> you guys are right. You guys are right from your vantage point, because again, I am not, and and oh my, my brother God. here has heard me say it multiple times. I am not saying that video games are the blame for violence. Yeah. I am simply arguing that they do desensitize yeah. us yeah. and meaning less shocking when we see violence. That's all I'm saying. I do not <laughs> think so. Can you imagine a violent... Listen, I know my kids. A violent act in front of them... Versus a video game. They totally would different. be, oh my gosh, traumatized. Can they you imagine someone going, seen... oh, you're... That that guy got shot in front of me that was fun thank it's you just like there is game. no way oh, it's the same your thing your kids are point zero 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 one percent of the Brian. culture <laughs> I know what you're saying I think it's a great point zeros. so somebody gets punched in the face to a knockout in a video game it happens right in front of you you don't go oh it's just like a video game thank I love this. you okay, you're so shocked you're scared you run when you watch boxing or they can, can't even no, see no, a woman wait. being like mistreated in front of them without like, wanting to jump in. When are you, you serious? When you That's watch serious. when you watch boxing, are you concerned for the person's life? I don't I mean, watch no. boxing. Yes or no? Boxing is stupid. Right. <laughs> No, no, no. You, you don't watch boxing? <laughs> I, I have watched crazy. it years ago when Tyson okay. was doing this thing. When you watch boxing, are you concerned for the person's life? No. No, you're Why? not. But we all understand that this person can die. Yeah, he it can, but yes. so rarely does it happen. So we're desensitized. Yeah. We got to keep things in the vein, in the avenue. When you watch MMA, and they kick a dude in the head, kick them in the head, and the dude falls down cold. Are you concerned that he's dead for his life when I he comes into the room? I think that's you are, crazy. right? Because you haven't been desensitized. Because you, you have not been desensitized to boxing mm -hmm. and MMA. Because so then you, don't you need play. to stop watching let me, football. Let me say, wait. You have not been desensitized to MMA and boxing because you do not watch that's it. True. If you start watching it every day, you will not be concerned wow. anymore. All I'm saying is keep it in the vein of what we're talking about. Those 
Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm yeah. not. I can't. I can't cross veins, obviously. But what you focus on all the time, desensitize. Yeah, your kids are not. They're gonna be spazzed out of somebody get punched them because they not. They don't watch people get punched out all the they time. They play video games. Boxing. They. Well, I'm talking about boxing. Dude, they play Fortnite. If somebody gets shot in but front of them, but it's not real. Remember. <laughs> did you see? Did you see Jeffrey's question? For me? Did you see Je Jeffrey's question for me at the very top? Jeffrey. So Brian, if your child has a new friend over, would you allow games to be played if you don't know the parent's position? That's a great mm -hmm. question. That's a great question. That's a question. Before I answer it, I want you to answer that <laughs> because you and I are both in the same position. Or well, I'll answer it first. Yeah, if you want. Um. Yeah, I would talk to the parents, so would, especially Absolutely. big ones like Fortnite. Yeah. With video games and with movies. Absolutely. We would ask parents, are you allowed to watch Absolutely. this? Absolutely. And uh, we would definitely want to know. And I think that's important for us to do. I think so, too. For the same reason, because even I would, if my kids went to your house, I would tell you yes for some and no for others. Because not every child is the same. So I, I don't even take it by family. Certain kids just can't handle certain things. But, but as, as, the, uh, as the kids get older, I'm asking less. Oh, yeah. I, I, at some point, once they reach high school, I'm not going to call your mommy and ask if you're allowed to do something. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Mackenzie says, we want to blame Number. something so simple for a very complex issue. Thank you. When in reality, we are all responsible for what our society has become. It's True. too easy to blame a thing rather than look at ourselves Thanks. and what we can do and what we have done. Yes, it is super complex. Yeah. I well, just want to be clear one more time before we go. That we're right. Wrong. We're right. Yeah! yeah. Right, you know, yeah to we have That's to be... Right. What's happening? Right. <laughs> that we have to be careful... <laughs> that we are not... That we, that we are that we argue and argue is not negative on the same vein. Because even the article says that it has a role. We're not blaming video games and saying the problem is video games. It contributes. But it is a, it is a contributing factor to the desensitization. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, saw, I was going to keep restates on y'all rewatch this back I'm not blaming video games or boxing or MMA <laughs> so you know what though I'm going to give him that but I'm going to say you have to be a certain person for it to make you do that I don't think it contributes to 100% of all population if I sit there and somebody makes me watch 100 hours of Fortnite I'm going to start going and shooting people <laughs> Whoa. I think certain people Where the army guy at? So serious. Where's the army guy at? Because that's exactly what they forced them to do when before they send them over there. They forced them to watch mm. certain things so that they, they'll be easier to pull the trigger on the on the people in the other culture. That's so true. so yeah, you force somebody with their eyes open to watch murder for a week straight. I'm you gonna, gonna fall asleep. Something gonna be wrong. No, your eyes are open. Like this. <laughs> before we go, get up here, Tim. <laughs> Show your muscles. Can, no, we, have a, can we have an arm no, wrestle? No, yeah, 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 yeah. That's not why we're here. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> are you scared? Are you scared? Go, go, go. Tell them about my muscles that desensitize you. Tell them about Reach Re Re City Church. Oh, yeah. So, hey, Reach City Church, uh, we're a new church plant um, in the Huff community. We'll officially launch in February. Uh, right now, we're just building our launch team. So, hey, if God has laid it on your heart to want to be a part of a new work in an urban community, I would love for you to reach out to me. You can go to uh, www.reachchurchcle.com for more information about us. From there, you can uh, reach out to me or you can find me on Facebook, Leonard Jr. Tanks. I would love to hear from you. Hey, and I would love for you to support one of our children down in the CMSD schools as we're doing our uniform drive. Find my page, Leonard Jr. Tanks on Facebook. There is a whole campaign. I would love for you to partner with us as we try to advance the kingdom in the Huff community. And for the record, my wrist is really sore today. I just don't Oh, know. my goodness. Oh. Uh, Adios, compadre. That's my, my, my saying, <laughs> compadres. Bye, compadres. I'm dropping money. <laughs> <It's yours. laughs> All right, you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. Peace out, homies.